This is part two out of a four-part series showing how to use SOLIDWORKS Motion to simulate a packaging machine. In this part, the motion study will be set up. Start SOLIDWORKS and open the assembly that was created in the first part of this series. That assembly can also be found at the bottom of this post. Go under Tools, Add-ins, and click the check mark next to SOLIDWORKS Motion and then click OK. Orient your model so it is positioned similar to what is shown here and then click the Motion Study 1 tab at the bottom of the screen. Under the drop down at the upper left of the pane, select Motion Analysis. We will first create solid body contacts between the different components in the assembly. These are used to simulate contact as well as friction between the parts. Click the contact icon located at the top of the bottom pane as illustrated. In the window that appears, select Use Contact Group. In the first box, select all the parts except for the balance plate and the base as shown. Click in the second box and then select the base of the packaging machine. Under the drop downs for the material, select Steel Dry for both. Click OK in the Contact Property Manager window. Create another contact between the lid and the two releasing plates below it. Use dry steel for the material as well. Add a third contact between the lid and the two releasing plates as shown. Use dry steel for the material. Add another contact between the box, the plate, and the lid using dry steel for the material as well. Create the final contact between the box and the balance plate, again using the dry steel material. Next, add gravity to the simulation by clicking the green apple icon. Make sure that gravity is in the negative Y direction. When that is set, click OK. We will now add a linear motor, also known as a linear actuator, to simulate the force of the conveyor belt on the box. Click the motor icon. Select linear motor for the motor type. Select the face of the box nearest the end of the base as shown. Choose constant speed under the motion heading and then set the speed to 4 inches per second Click the reverse direction icon so that the arrow is pointed as illustrated. With that set, click OK. Add another linear motor and select the end face of the first releasing plate. Make sure that the arrow points away from the plate. Under the motion heading, select servo motor from the drop down and then select displacement. Click OK and follow the same procedure to add servo motors to the other three releasing plates. We will now simulate a spring on the bottom of the balance plate. Click the spring icon. In the window that appears, select the bottom of the balance plate and the bottom of the hole that the plate goes into. Calculate out the spring constant by using the formula K equals negative F over X, where F is the force being applied to the balance plate and X is the distance that the spring displaces. In our case, the force would be the weight of the balance plate along with the weight of the box, the lid, and the plate. X is the maximum distance that the balance plate needs to travel in order for the box to continue down the ramp. Once the spring constant is determined, it can be used along with the weight of the balance plate to calculate the displacement due to only the balance plate. This distance can be then added to the default free length of the spring in order to determine the actual free length so that the plate will sit even with the top of the conveyor. When you have determined these values, click OK to add the spring. The calculations and values needed for the spring will be shown in the next part of this series in order for you to compare your own calculations. Select the Motion Study Properties icon in the Motion pane and under the heading for the Motion Analysis, deselect the box next to Animate during calculation. Click OK to close the property manager. This will help to reduce the time it takes to calculate the study. Next, we are going to add sensors to the model. These sensors are used to detect when a specified object, like the box, crosses its path or when it is a certain distance away. In the event-based motion study that will be created, these will be used to trigger certain procedures to occur. To add a sensor, right-click the sensors folder in the feature manager and click Add Sensor. From the drop-down for the sensor type, select Proximity. Choose the square sensor face on the base part as shown. 
Click in the Components to Track box and select the box as the object to look for. Set the distance to 14 inches and make sure that it is pointing towards the center of the conveyor. If it is aimed in the wrong direction, check the Reverse Direction box. When the box crosses this path, an alert will trigger. Create a second sensor using the same procedure, but place it on the sensor located underneath the lid. Make sure that you save your model. In the next part of this series, the event-based motion study will be created.